We met at Baltimore School of the Arts. It was the first day, and he came over to me and introduced himself. And in high school, Paco was a little funny looking. Definitely, from looking at him, wasn't necessarily like the type of cat that I would even like deal with. But as soon as he approached me, he was like a magnet. It was like once, once you paid attention to him, he kind of sucked you in. And we hit it off from that moment on. I tell you, it's interesting. I have to say that Pac was probably one of the first male figures that I had in my life that saw the beauty and the talent and my intelligence separated from sex. Mm. Right. So that's something that a child, a, a young girl usually gets from their father. I didn't have that. Pac obviously often comes up in conversation with you. Do, do you think about him or is it people like me that bring him up that, that put him in your mind? Oh, there's not a day that goes by that I don't think about Pac. Yeah. I think about him every single day. Pac was the first one that it, it wasn't about sex. It was about you. You're a beautiful woman. You're talented. You're strong. I respect you and you are my girl. You're going to sit right here and I'm going to protect you. I'm going to make sure, if nothing else, you get what you need. You would tell me all the time, Jada, you're gonna be a star. I'd be like, Pac, right, come on. He's like, you're gonna be a star. You got it. You just got it. There's no physical chemistry between us at all. You were not and it wasn't even just for me. Right. You know, it was him too. I mean, don't, I mean, you know, there was a time when I was like, just kiss me. Let's mm -hmm. just see how this goes. And when I tell you, it had to be the most Sexual. disgusting oh. kiss for us both. Oh. Oh <laughs> Explain that to me because it was so platonic, the relationship. The only way I can put it is just the higher power just did not want that because I feel as though if Pac and I had any kind of sexual chemistry, we might have killed each other. I wanted people to know what you're seeing in regards to my relationship with Tupac is not true. And that was important to me because... My relationship was really special. And, um, it was very, uh, com complicated. And, um, I just felt like it was a huge disservice. Um, and that really through my relationship with Pac would have shown people a true what he truly was because it's one thing to see Pac's persona right. publicly and who he was personally i don't think either one of us really thought that we would have made it in the way that we did you know and a lot of people talk about my relationship with Pac and trying to figure that out you know and that was a huge loss in my life absolutely yeah because he was one of those people that I expected to be here. My upset is more anger. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because I feel that he left me. And I know that's not true. And right. it's a very selfish way to think about it. But I really did believe that he was going to be here for the long run. Well, maybe I'll be down to scoop you up later in life. You ain't all shriveled up. <laughs> <laughs> Be like Ozzy Davis and Ruby D. Ruby D. Ruby D. And so when I think about it, I still get really mad. Mm -hmm. I get mad at God. I get mad at him. Mm -hmm. I get mad at everybody. He was one of my best friends. Um, he was like a brother. And, uh, I mean, it was beyond friendship for us, you know, as far as just, uh, it was really difficult to explain because the type of relationship we had, you only get that once in a lifetime, so... He was like a brother, father figure to me. Very protective and we took really good care of each other. We took really good care of each other. I just
just feel like there's nothing better than a gangster type dude with a big heart. Yeah. yeah. Who has a soft spot for you. I don't want you being all emotional with everybody. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I think it's dope when you find somebody that can be that way just with you. Yeah. Absolutely. That you find that little soft spot in them. And, ooh, I think that's the sexiest thing is that when you listen to Tupac, you know he's a sensual, talented man, but you would never, I wouldn't have pictured me either. that much romance. I, I do, I have. I mean, when he said, come with me, I was like, where? <laughs> where are we going? Were you ever jealous of the love Jada had for Tupac? Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> I thought you were oh gonna say no. Oh my God, <laughs> that dude. Let me like, and you know, and that was in the that was in the early days. Yeah, that was in the early days, and it was like um, that's a, that was a big regret for me too, because I could never I could never open up to interact with Pac, mm -hmm. you know, and because we had a little bit of a thing, right? Because you know. You know, they grew up together and, you know, they loved each other, but they never had that, you know, they never had a, a sexual relationship, relationship yeah. but they had come into that age where now that was a possibility. And then Jada was with me, you know? So, you know, Pac had a little thing on that, um, but she just loved him. Like he was the image of perfection, but she was with the Fresh Prince, you know? <laughs> so it was like, I, I just, I never could, like, even we were in a room together a couple times. I couldn't speak to him, you know, and, you know, he wasn't going to speak to me if I wasn't going to speak to him. But, really? It seemed like y'all yeah. would have so much in common. No, that's what Jada would say all yeah. the time. She right. was like, I'm telling you, y'all are so similar. You will, you will love him. And I just never, you know, that, that, that was a huge regret of mine. I just didn't, I couldn't, I couldn't handle it, you know. I was this, I was the soft rapper from Philly right. and he was pop. I don't think I was guilty as much as I felt sadness, mm. you know, for not having the opportunity to tell him that I loved him. I don't think either one of us really thought that we would have made it in the way that we did, but we knew we were going to do something. We look at death from the selfish side, like, you know, that guy died, oh, it's so sad. Why is it sad? He's away from all of this bad stuff that's here on earth. He's, I mean, at the worst, he's just somewhere quiet, no nothing. At best, he's an angel, or he's at the next existence, or he's a spirit somewhere, you know. What is so bad about that? It's only bad for the people who he left, because you guys are mad. That's like some crab in the bucket type stuff. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's this harsh, harsh analogy, but that's what it's like, mm -hmm. though. Jada Pinkett, Jada's my heart, you know what I mean? She will be my friend for my whole life. Well, maybe I'll be down to scoop you up later in life. You ain't all uh, shriveled up. <laughs> <laughs> We'll be all together. Be like Ozzy Davis and Ruby D. Vic, you know you always got a place in my heart. She can have my one heart, my my liver, my lungs. <clears throat> Dear Jada. You are the omega of my heart, the foundation for my concept of love. When I think of what a black woman should be, it's you that I first think of. You will never fully understand how deeply my heart feels for you. I worry that we'll grow apart and I'll end up losing you. You bring me to climax without sex and you do it all with regal grace. You are my heart in human form, a friend I could never replace. So there you have it, fresh out of the mouth of babes. Jada Pinkett Smith explaining in her own words exactly how she felt about Tupac and how their love for one another existed in this nebulous and undefined space where they represented everything to one another except sexual partners. Unfortunately, that opportunity hadn't arised yet because remember, they both left Baltimore for California at 18 years old and they both were household names by the age of 21. So let me ask you this. What were you doing in your love life at the age of 21? Were you making decisions assuming that time was of the essence? Were you professing your love daily to the man of your dreams? 
Were you dropping down on one knee proposing to your high school crush? Or were you busy pursuing your career? Busy telling yourself that you still had time. But you first need to get past this next milestone. You need to first graduate from college. Or okay. get this new certification. Or this new job. Or get out of your parents' house. Yeah, and on and on. In essence, in your early 20s, were you going above and beyond to be married to the person that you know wasn't ready yet? Or were you telling yourself that you still had time? Because the latter is exactly where Jada Pickett was in her life at the age of 22. Remember, Tupac died at 25 years old. Jada was 24. She hadn't spoken to him in months prior to his death and before that, he was either shot or in jail. So the last opportunity she truly had to pursue a relationship with him, she was 22 years old and they both were focused on their careers. I mean obviously she knew she loved Tupac and she knew he also loved her. But as anyone who's ever been madly in love will tell you, timing is everything. Because at the time of his death, Tupac still had Jada in the friend zone. Remember, he'd already been married and divorced once to Keisha Morris, and he'd been recently engaged again to Gadotta Jones, the daughter of Quincy Jones at the time of his death. So it was abundantly clear that Tupac, before he died, did not view Jada as a romantic option. Yet. But anyone who's ever watched the black classic film Boomerang will tell you, that's not the ending that Jada was hoping for. Oh no, she wanted that Angela ending. You know the one where the girl that's been best friends with the hot and charismatic guy that's waiting in the wings for him to realize that she's the best option for him? We've all seen that movie before, right? You know, the one where she believes she's the only one that truly loves him for who he is? So she sit backs and waits for him to make all of these terrible romantic decisions and hoping that he'll realize it for himself. And eventually he does and of course he double backs and chooses the woman that's been there all along. I believe that that's the ending that Jada was always hoping for. Unfortunately, the love of her life was ripped away before he could come to that realization. And without her ever telling him how she truly felt. I don't think I was guilty as much as I felt sadness, you know, for not having the opportunity to tell him that I loved him. And now she's forever cursed, knowing that her partner will never truly live up to her expectations because he'll never be Tupac. She just loved him like he was the image of perfection, but she was with the Fresh Prince. I couldn't, I couldn't handle it, you know? I was, this, I was the soft rapper from Philly right. and he was pop. So unfortunately, she's forced to settle for the Fresh Prince. On the next episode of Entangled, we do a deep dive into Jada's relationship with Will and how it directly relates to the entanglement. So if you'd like to know more, please like and subscribe and be notified when episode 3 drops titled Jada and Will, Bad Marriage for Life. <laughs> We ride together, we, we die, die together. together. Bad, Bad marriage, marriage for life. life. <laughs> 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 That's terrible. It's the truth. It's the truth.